So if we switch to Microsoft Azure and look at uh, Microsoft Cloud Consumption, always in your enterprise agreement, do a deep dive into your Azure consumption. It will become uh, object of discussion with Microsoft. Why? They always want to sell you a Microsoft Azure consumption commitment, meaning you will commit to a certain amount of money that you will consume over the coming three-year term. No, in, no upfront payments. Microsoft doesn't generally do that anymore unless it's very interesting to them. But just a paper commitment. You say you spend $5 million in, uh, um, uh, based on that, we will give you certain amounts of incentives. Um, why do you want to investigate your, uh, your cloud consumption? Microsoft will show their ambitious growth plan to you. And that usually has exponential growth. It usually looks something like oh, over the past month, you've grown 6% month over month on an average. So if we um, extrapolate that th towards the coming 36 months, that means you're going to spend X, Y, and Z. And we have investigated all these different projects that might um, uh, onboard to the Azure platform as well. So that will make the total an X amount of million. You will want to have done your own research here because it's very great to have um, resources from Microsoft to help identify your cloud consumption and projects that you might want to bring to the Azure cloud. But you want to also do your own homework and be, make sure that you counter with your own knowledge. So create a strong consumption plan for your organization. So don't go into the flow of, oh yeah, we might grow exponentially month over month with this amount of percentage, but say that will probably remain steady because what we do now is the bare minimum and that's not gonna change. Show any projects that might be of interest to bring to the Microsoft Cloud, but never say, oh, this will go to Azure. It might go to Azure. Always consider your multi-cloud strategy. Look towards optimizations. Are you already using reserved instance or Azure hybrid benefit? Are you um, turning off uh, dev test environments uh, and, uh, throughout the night instead of uh, having these spun up for 24 seven? Can I right size uh, to newer uh, versions of my VMs that I'm using? Uh, how is my storage uh, that I'm currently using, et cetera, et cetera. Show that decline as well. We have investigated optimization potential in the form of why and uh, create a compelling event. And most importantly, bring it to the table at the right time. Later is better. Keep Microsoft in uh, thinking that they will probably get a large Azure co commitment from you. And in the end, you can trade it out for something in uh, something else. Then a little bit about your on-prem analysis. And what we typically see is that a lot of our clients are currently already um, deployed in the Microsoft Cloud for their um, uh, modern workplace. And uh, what is left is usually the server environment. So a server and state, a state of analysis is always part of what we're um, uh, looking at. You want to do this thoroughly. So you want to do a thorough SAM engagement to know what you're using on-prem and if this still aligns with what you are buying. The most money is often in the server backend. So SQL and Windows Server data center will typically be the large cost factors here. And we can approximately uh, mostly find 50% of savings by uh, reimagining your uh, current licensing. So looking at licensing virtual versus physical for SQL, for instance, um, re uh, yeah, applying Windows Server standard instead of Windows Server data center based on certain uh, break even points that will help immensely. These things can be easily found online. So if you're not aware of where these break even points are, do and find them and look them up. Otherwise, drop us a note. We'll happily help you along your way. And Microsoft is still very focused on SQL Server. SQL Server Enterprise is always a scorecard item for Microsoft make sure you investigate your options in this area see if you can create a compelling event for your negotiation with microsoft 
I'm not saying you need to buy a more SQL enterprise. I'm just saying if you can reduce that, it might make a difference in your coming negotiation with Microsoft. And looking at on-prem, if you're still utilizing project and Visio uh, device-based on-premises, um, these are typically not that important to Microsoft, um, but they want to flip them to the subscription model. And you should ask yourself, do I need this? Usually in our uh, case uh, opinion, the answer is no. You do not even need software assurance on Project and Visio. You do not need to benefit the, from the from SA licenses that they have for Project and Visio subscriptions. So what we always recommend is take Project and Visio out of software assurance don't renew this at all and step into the cloud subscription model whenever your timing is right.